Welcome to the Carnelian Sisterhood. Where badass babes join forces to celebrate one another's vibrancy. We know empowered women empower women. The Carnelian Sisterhood offers a fresh and electric take on self-care, spirituality, sexuality, and other topics for the modern self-identifying women. Join myself, your good, good facilitator, and the rest of your sisters here every week for your fix of high vibes and good times. Like we can. I am woman. Welcome back to the Carnelian Sisterhood Podcast. I am your show host and women's community host, Coach Coco. In our last episode, we dismantled some of the ideas around what it means to be in tune with your throat space what it means to be connected to your authentic truth and self-expression, and how a closed-off throat space often shows up for highly sensitive people, as we are often deeply connected to our personal truth and core values from a very young age. I shared some of my personal journey with how my throat space was closed down and how many of the women in my family experienced this blockage in the throat space. I have found it to be part of my calling here in this time and space to not only cultivate the education and tools to guide and support women towards profound feelings of empowerment, but to live a life connected to my wild, raw, authentic truth as a way to honor the women in my ancestral lineage who crave that sort of mental, spiritual, and vocal freedom, but simply never were able to connect to how. I spoke last week about the how being unlearning. Unlearning all the bullshit, societal's conditioning that's been perpetuated generation after generation. Unlearning all the mental paradigms that have held women captive in their own minds in fear of numerous things. One could be fear of being in trouble for their uninhibited truth, usually brought about from a witch wound. Two could be a fear of karmic masculine. Again, this can go back to an unhealed witch wound in our soul or ancestral lineage. And three could be a fear of being seen. Closed throat space often triggered by our witch wound and shame around our big, beautiful, radiant magic. So you can see why I felt like the witch wound was so, so important for us to discuss in the Carnelian Sisterhood podcast, and just in the work that we do within the community as well. The witch wound exists within all of us, as I explained in past episodes. It particularly exists in us women, because as women, we hold this innate capacity for absolute radiant magic. As women, we possess the capacity to be healers, nurturers, creatrix, crones. We all have these different archetypes within us that we can leverage off of to really embody our absolute divinity. I like to think of the witch wound as the third door to healing. In my own experience, I was doing all of the mental work, going to therapy, doing trauma therapies, doing all of the mental health habits that were to help me feel more balanced, emotionally stable and clear. I was nurturing my body with foods that would help my mental health. I was taking care of my body to feel more stable, more powerful. And I was still feeling this lack, this little something that was missing in order for me to embody my absolute raw empowerment, to embody my wild woman radiancy. Discovering the witch wound was the third door for me. It was the way for me to finally reach this really deep sense of fulfillment, this really true deep sense of empowerment to feel truly at peace with who I was, to welcome my gifts with open arms, and then some. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the concept of the third door, I first stumbled upon this concept a couple years ago in a podcast where the author of the book, The Third Door, spoke about his experience as a young man trying to get into a nightclub. He's waiting in the first line that he reaches, and the line is long. It's taking forever for him to get in, so he walks around to the other entrance. Again, he's struggling to get into the nightclub, and he's feeling as though it's a hopeless case. 
He then walks around to the other side of the building, and there's this door that's wide open and able for him to access completely with no resistance. He realized from this experience in his life that no matter what it is, there will likely always be a third door for you to access, whether it's in your career, which is really what his book focuses on. He interviews all of these highly, highly successful people and tries to understand what their third door was for them to attain all of their wildest dreams, right? But it could be in um, your life. It can be in your magic. It can be in any aspect, any facet. There is a third door that is the least resistance. It is the way in that really allows you to access this flow, to work with what's already there and completely open and available. To me, that is the witch wound. The witch wound is this third door for us to really access tremendous amounts of healing with the path of least resistance. Now, this isn't to say we won't have trauma responses. This isn't to say that it might not um, activate different emotions and triggers within us, but it is really this wound that can be worked through in order to see the most roundabout healing and transformation in many different areas of our life. So that is why you'll often hear me refer back to the witch wound. That is why I find the witch wound to be so powerful for feminine healing and women's empowerment. Overall, it's this fear of what I described in last week's episode as ruffling some fucking feathers, right? In our soul's lineage or ancestral lineage, it may have been downright unsafe to do so. I explained in episodes past that I am so, so grateful to exist in a time and space where it has become safe for us to exhibit our radiance, to express our totality, to embrace our shadow, to unlearn the conditioning that we underwent through whatever amount of time our personal undergoing ancestral patterns or soul's lineage that protected us. Because as I've also mentioned before, we look upon these programmings we've been taught by either seeing it played out for us or learning it for ourselves through our own experiences, We look at these programmings with so much compassion and grace. They showed up because at one point or another, it served us or our lineage. If you've been following along with these episodes, itching to understand how to open up the throat space, heal the witch wound, express your radiant magical self, connect authentically and vulnerably through your heart space, and all of the other beautiful ways we've been healing in the Carnelian Sisterhood, It's because you likely feel this itch to free your most radiant, vibrant self, to break free of the conditioning and live in alignment with your highest self, to attract more juicy, ecstatic things into your experience. I love that for you, sis. And maybe you're all on board for liberating your truest, most raw, authentic self and ruffling some feathers along the way because you're ready to shaken and awaken the souls around you. But let's discuss that a little bit more so today so that we can truly show up with the most compassion and authenticity in those moments of ruffling so we can stay embodied and gracious in those times. Along any path of self-discovery, self-growth, whatever you'd like to call it, you're bound to bump into some people along the way who are activated by your experience. Sometimes it's random strangers and other times they could be your dearest friends. In the last episode, I touched on this topic a bit of how this triggering or activation around other women living in their fullest, most magical self is something I deeply appreciated because it awakened this realization within myself of just how much I wanted to grow, how much I could strive for and embody. However, we all activate differently. And it takes a very empowered woman to stand in all her glory, activating the egos and souls around her and not allow it to take her out of her magnificent character. Let's create an example. You're a high vibe and energy badass who has discovered her personal power and passionately stands in her self-expression. Go you. You go to a place that you've gone many times before. However, this place is more acquainted with the shrunken version of you 
that you worked very hard to raise up, love, and empower. It took a lot of determination, self-love, shadow work, meditation, commitment to those practices, EFT tappings day after day, coaching with Coco, showing up to lunar circles each month when you didn't really know what to say, reinforcing boundaries with loved ones that cause friction in your relationships, giving up your favorite crappy foods to feel better in your own skin, the list goes on. And let's pause and honor how much fucking work it took before you got to this place where working it became your normal where this high vibrational, expressive, intuitive, badass energy became your normalcy. You deserve mega fucking applause for that. And mama, I am celebrating you to the moon and back. But it's all the work in it, the self-work, self-reflection, accountability that it took you that triggers all the work that has yet to be done in those people when you walk into this once familiar place. It is all the integration of the parts of yourself that were unconsciously holding you back, that were brought into your now radiant light, that illuminates the shadowy unconscious aspects of the people whose feathers are what we call ruffled. It's not your job to help them understand that. It's not your job to prove anything. It is your job to stay in your bliss. Staying embodied, present, and connected to your truth in moments when people may cast doubt judgment, ridicule, or downright hate on you. Of course, they may want to jump into defense mode or over-explaining mode or whatever way we're used to being activated in the past, but you and your ego are amigos, baby. Let the others fall into their ego traps, pray for their soul's expansion, and let the ruffled feathers bounce off your iridescent aura to return right back to sender. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. I just had to pop on and offer you something fun real quick. If you want to learn more about understanding energy, your connection to it, how to strengthen your energetic boundaries, and then some, make sure you join in to the Carnelian Sisterhood online community where I will be sharing information on how to join the Feel the Vibes two-day Quantum Leap Masterclass. We'll be deep diving into these topics and more, so you don't want to miss this quantum leap for becoming your high vibe and energy badass. You can find the links for the Carnelian Sisterhood community and all of the other groovy stuff I talk about in the show notes. So what is an ego trap? Sounds a little spooky, right? Well, no fear, my dear. Awareness is key. Having an understanding of your ego and the many ego traps we can fall into is a key way that we can stay embodied, grounded, and present in moments that may have shaken us up at one point in our journeys. You see, we've been working with our egos as high vibe and energy rock stars for a while now, clearing egoic beliefs that say it's safer to play small. Opening up your heart space is how you get hurt or Girls always gossip, you're better off lone wolfing it, right? We've begun integrating these limiting beliefs that come from our conditioned ego, compassionately understanding where these beliefs may have come from, and lovingly made way for the ego to rest and do its main job for us, which is understanding who we are and how we relate to the world without all of the other stuff it shows up to do thinking that it's keeping us safe when it's actually keeping us separate. But still, the ego arises within all of us with these beliefs that are sometimes very difficult to get out of. Ego traps, as they're called. This can sound like, you're spiritual, but you eat meat? I don't know. I just think you may have more evolving to do. How can having multiple partners be ethical? I think being with one person is the only way you can really respect yourself and someone you love. The way you dress is so... I thought you cared about the planet. I don't watch TV or anything. It just makes people so stupid and mindless. Are you catching the similarities in these? Let me help you out. An ego trap is believing you are doing something right and judging anyone who does anything differently. There is no right way to do this human thing. For one person, being the woman who speaks her truth boldly after years of never sharing her opinion at all might be a huge achievement, but someone in an ego trap may say, she's so forthright, I thought spiritual girls were supposed to be zen. (laughs) Right? Anytime you believe you know more than someone, take into consideration that everyone knows something that you do not. Of course, 
We'll all have opinions about the way people do things. That's what the ego's job is. But it is when we get trapped in this way of thinking, and when we allow it to pull us into separation instead of empathy, compassion, understanding, that is when we yet again lose our authenticity and juicy high vibrational alignment we've worked so hard to attain. I don't know about you, but blocking myself from learning through another's experience, comparing my own experience to another's with judgment, feeling as though all of my choices are superior sounds like an exhausting and unpleasant way to live. Why? Well, not only is this way of operating letting the ego run the show when we all know there is such beauty in our embodied, felt sense way of navigating life, but it's also pulling us out of connection and into separation. Not to mention, when we operate from this judgmental ego trap, we're putting unnecessary amounts of pressure on ourselves to exist in this holier-than-thou way. It creates judgment on ourselves when we may fall out of alignment with our personal truth of what's right. We become harsh on ourselves to live out these rules of what should and shouldn't be, and you know I don't like to shit on myself or others. We become rigid in how we connect and learn from others. So when you're embodying your full, vibrant, magical self, you're bound to rattle up some egos along the way. That's okay. Other people's discomfort is not from you. It's from their egos. Those of us who did the work to no longer spend all day people-pleasing, babysitting others' egos, We have to accept the fact that people will have reactions, opinions, judgment, criticism, and so on. What people have to say about you says more about them. Because as a good person, chances are you will hear what they have to say. But right here, right now, free yourself from the need of their approval. Free yourself from the need of validation. Free yourself of the need of anyone's permission. Trust that you will make choices aligned with your spirit. And when you operate from this place, you can trust that what you will do will not come at the cost or harm of others. When you operate from your highest self, you are acting in the highest of vibrations. If that rattles a few people, well, baby, let's hope it shakes them enough to wake them to their own limiting beliefs to the discomfort of separation, to the shadow that is asking to be nurtured and integrated within them. Because remember, for every feather you ruffle, there is someone on your motherfucking wave who is cheering you on, grateful you exist the way you exist, and inspired by your courage to be so unabashedly you. Focus on the way you activate those people instead. I invite you to join us in the Carnelian Sisterhood, a celestial slice of the internet where we honor, accept, and celebrate you and all your radiance no matter where you are on your journey. We have monthly lunar gatherings, free workshops, downloadable tools, EFT series for clearing limiting beliefs, and so much more. Next week, we're going to clear even more of those limiting beliefs that hold us back from feeling strong, powerful, and deeply connected to our truth as we dive into the B word, boundaries. As sensitive superheroes, our relationship with boundaries may be a rocky one, but I'm going to share with you how to redesign, revamp, and reestablish boundaries that feel safe, authentic to your highest self, so you can go on with your badass, high vibe, and lava lamp soul in the world if you needed a sign you're in the right place this is it sis until next time bye bye I am woman.